stims are the potions of Escape from Tarkov. They add another element to the RPG aspect of the game, but they can be extremely confusing to learn. Each have a variety of effects from increasing carry capacity, to removing bleeds, to increasing your sprint speed. Today, we'll cover them all. I'm Gaz, welcome to the channel. This one started out as a research project for me, as I rarely use stims at all, though I might start after making this video. I'm interested to hear how much you use stims. I'll be reading your comments, let's strike up a conversation about their place in EFT. I suppose the best way to go about this is to list the effects of each stim, then talk about the situations in which you'd find them most beneficial. Starting with SJ1, also known as Red Stim, this stim increases endurance, strength and stress resistance skills by 20 for 180 seconds. After 100 seconds, it also decreases energy recovery by 0.25 per second and hydration recovery by 0.3 per second for 200 seconds. Every stim in this list has a use time of 2 seconds and a delay of 1 second before the buffs take effect, unless otherwise mentioned. The SJ-1 is one of the stims in this list that should be taken as you're about to enter combat, or as you've got some downtime during combat. The increase to stress resistance reduces the chance you'll receive the pain effect and any tremors. The strength and endurance increase make things like stamina drain more slowly, allows you to hold your breath for longer and allows you to carry more weight. Next up we've got the ETG-C or Green Stim. This one increases metabolism and immunity skills by 20 for 90 seconds. It also increases health regeneration by 6.5 and energy recovery by 0.5 per second for 60 seconds. After 65 seconds you lose that energy recovery and take an additional energy recovery penalty of minus 3 per second for 20 seconds as well as a decrease in your health and endurance skills by 5 for 60 seconds. The ETG is a very effective regen stim. The health regen from this stim is over 6 times that of the Propotol, which we'll be talking about shortly. Just make sure you've got plenty of food as your energy drains pretty quickly after taking it. Moving on to the SJ6 or Blue Stim. After taking the SJ6 you'll receive an increase of plus 30 to your max stamina, as well as plus 2 to your stamina recovery for 240 seconds. After 200 seconds and lasting for 40 seconds, you'll receive a tremor and get some nasty tunnel vision. The SJ6 is a stim you'll be using if you're trying to hit the best loot spots first. If you need to book it to dorms on customs or the resort on shoreline, pop one of these and you'll sprint for longer and regen stamina much faster. A much lesser used stim now, the SJ9. The SJ9 has a 6 second delay before the effect is active. Once this kicks in, your body temperature will be lowered by 7 degrees for 300 seconds meaning you'll be invisible to thermal scopes. At the same time, and for the same duration, this stim reduces your metabolism skill by 20. After 300 seconds, when the effect is worn off, you'll receive the pain effect for 120 seconds. The SJ6 is a stim that most of the player base won't ever use. The main effect on this one is to make you less visible to thermals, which, if you're not playing a night map, likely won't be of much use to you. Next, a personal favourite of mine due to its relative simplicity, the Propotol. This little beauty removes pain and tremors immediately and gives a painkiller effect for 240 seconds. It also increases metabolism, health and vitality skills by 20 and increases health regen by plus 1 for 300 seconds. 270 seconds after using a Propotol, you'll receive a tremor and tunnel vision for 30 seconds. As I touched on before, the Propotol is a regen stim. While not as good as the ETG, its effects last a lot longer and has some other benefits too. They're quite a bit cheaper than green stims as well, so I always try to keep hold of at least one of these. The next stim we're looking at here is the Sagustin. This one's like a tourniquet on steroids. It removes any light and heavy bleeds you have and increases vitality by 20 points as well as prevents you from receiving any new bleeds for 180 seconds. 170 seconds after use and for 40 seconds, you'll receive a tremor and decreased hydration recovery by 1.4 per second. Straight after use, you'll also receive a decrease in the metabolism skill by 5 for 180 seconds. You'll likely use as Augustine if you've got a few bleeds and are still actively engaging in combat. This can be a do or die stim and one that you'll be glad you have if you need to use it. Next, we're looking at Adrenaline. Adrenaline removes pain and tremors and adds the painkiller effect for 60 seconds. 
For 60 seconds after use, you'll receive an increase of 10 to endurance, strength and recoil control skills. For 15 seconds, you'll also have increased health regen by plus 4. Using this stim also decreases your stress resistance skill by 10 for 60 seconds, and after a 50 second delay, your energy recovery will be decreased by 0.8 per second, and hydration recovery by 1 per second for 30 seconds. Adrenaline is a great all-rounder for when a painkiller is needed, but you're still in the fight and could use an edge. This comes in the way of both the strength and endurance boost, but also the recoil control, which could be the turning point in a fight. Next up, we have the Meldonin Injector, one of two stims in this list that are a little more controversial. After taking, for a whole 900 seconds, this stim reduces damage taken, except to the head, by 10% as well as increasing stamina recovery by 0.5, the endurance skill by 20, and strength skill by 10. After 30 seconds, for 900 seconds, this stim also decreases energy and hydration recovery by 0.1 per second. Meldonin is a great little stim. It's got a heap of bonuses to health, stamina, endurance and strength, as well as a damage reduction. On top of this, the downsides aren't too heavy, especially if you keep plenty of food and drink on you. Another blood loss prevention stim next, the AHF1M. This one's pretty simple. For 60 seconds, your health skill is increased by 5 and you won't suffer from any new bleeds. It also decreases hydration recovery by 0.3 per second for 120 seconds. The AHF1 is the baby brother to the Zagustin. It's short and sweet, but will get you out of a pinch if the fight you're in isn't likely to last too much longer. Next, we're looking at the 3BTG. After taking this one for 240 seconds, your attention and perception skills are increased by 30. Strength skill is increased by 10, and your stamina recovery rate is increased by 1. After 120 seconds, for an additional 120 seconds, your energy recovery is decreased by 0.25 per second, and after 220 seconds for a further 45 seconds, you'll receive a tremor. The 3BTG has a few nice increases, you'll be able to loot faster with higher attention and hear footsteps from further away with increased perception, but honestly, there are better stims in this list that I prefer to have with me in raid. The L1, wait for it, norepinephrine, is up next. The L1 removes pain and tremors and gives a painkiller effect for 120 seconds. For 120 seconds, it also increases the endurance skill by 10, strength skill by 20, and maximum stamina by 30. It also decreases energy and hydration recovery by 0.45 per second for 60 seconds. As I'm working through this list, I'm realizing that most of the stims in EFT increase strength and endurance and add some sort of painkiller effect. This one is no different aside from a boost to max stamina, so we won't harp on this too much. If you're getting value out of this video, and there's a huge amount of info squeezed into this one, a like rating would be hugely appreciated. We've got the second controversial stim up next, and that's the P22 injector. For 60 seconds after use, the P22 decreases damage taken, except to the head, by 10%, and increases your stress resistance, health and vitality skills by 30. 65 seconds after taking a P22, your endurance is decreased by 10 and your stamina recovery rate is reduced by 0.8 for a duration of 60 seconds. The P22 is a short, sharp increase to your overall health for 60 seconds. This is the epitome of a quick use stim, with the intention of pushing hard at your opponent to end the fight after popping it. We're nearly there, the Abdul boss is up next, and this one is quite interesting. For a massive 1800 seconds, your endurance and strength skills are increased by 10, your stress resistance and charisma skills are increased by 20, and your stamina recovery rate is increased by 0.5. However, for the entire duration, your memory, intellect, and attention skills are decreased by 20. You also have an increased chance to receive abdominal bleeds, hydration and energy recovery is reduced by 0.05 per second, your damage taken except to the head is increased by 20%, and you'll receive the tunnel vision effect, as well as the pain effect and light bleeds. Where do I start with the old doll boss? Firstly, it's the stim with the longest benefits. 1800 seconds, which equates to 30 whole minutes. Lots of smaller increases here, but just beware as the side effects with this stim last the entire duration and can be devastating. If you've got a full backpack and are running to extract, the mule stim might interest you. 
For 900 seconds, your weight limit is increased by 50% at a cost of decreased health regeneration by 0.1 and increased damage taken except to the head of 9%. Nothing much else to say about the mule stim other than I'd probably take it after you're sure everyone in the area is dead as it's great for vacuuming up loot but the increase to damage taken is a very harsh penalty. And finally we've got the XTG12 antidote injector. This injector removes the toxin effect and gives you the antidote effect for 60 seconds after a 6 second delay. During the same time frame your health skill is also decreased by 5. There's currently, as far as I'm aware, only one use for this stim, which is to remove poison inflicted by cultist knives. If you're going into a night raid, this one may be useful, but I wouldn't bank on it. Phew, that was a huge list of items. If you're still here, you're either a super fan or just really want to learn about each stim in EFT. Either way, a like rating would be much appreciated. I hope you gleaned some information from this guide. Feel free to come back and use the chapters to skip around when you're trying to remember which stims you want for a particular raid. And do remember that new stims and injectors are added to Escape from Tarkov quite frequently, as well as small changes made to the ones that are already in the game. This means that, while the guide is fully correct as of February 2022, there might be revisions that need to be made in future. If you think something has changed, the wiki is the best place to get updated information for EFT. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.